What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Recent advances in stem cell biology and genetic engineering now make it possible for scientists to permanently alter the genes in cells and entire organisms. In a past video, I covered the recent research where scientists implanted human brain tissue into mice, effectively making chimeras for the sake of medical research. Now I'm talking about they're injecting human pluripotent stem cells into an animal host embryo. Pluripotent stem cells are the type that can develop into any type of adult human cell. So when it's injected into the animal embryo, you get a hybridized interspecies specimen. At this stage in the research, scientists are just trying to figure out how to make a stable human animal chimera. They've been trying so many different animals and they're trying to figure out what animal to use when in the process to inject the human stem cells. And the thing is, these type of cells, the pluripotent human stem cells, is the particular type that it's, it's like the most powerful because it can become any cell in the body. So when they inject those human cells into the animal embryo, it could go on to hybridize within the heart, the brain, the lungs, different, uh, different parts, but it's not going to be even and they're going to get a different hybrid basically every time they're making one so the best they can do right now is to edit the genome of the animal embryo and so that it doesn't produce a certain organ so whatever gene is responsible for the development of the lungs for example they would turn that gene off and hope that given th there's an injection of human stem cells that those would take over and then a human lung would form in the place of that absence. The breakthrough technology that has allowed this gene editing to take place is called CRISPR. It lets scientists splice and change up genes in the genome of any species, including humans. It's already been used in positive ways, but one of the creators of CRISPR who won a Nobel Prize in chemistry last year had some interesting things to say about this scientific breakthrough. CRISPR technology gives scientists a way to go in and edit the letters of DNA, just like we might cut and paste uh, text in our, in our document or uh, replace whole sentences, even, even whole paragraphs or chapters. It's one thing to talk about being able to remove mutations from the, the human population that cause genetic disease, and I think for many people that would be a desirable thing to do. On the other hand, it's very, I think it's a very different, uh, different uh, discussion to think about uh, using a technology like this to create uh, enhanced human beings, people that are taller or have a certain eye color or, or other kinds of physical or, or intellectual traits that might be considered desirable. Um, and, uh, you know, it sort of immediately brings up uh, 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 sort of the, the whole area of eugenics and, and uh, sort of access to technology, who gets access, who pays for it, who decides, who decides uh, whether or not to, to do such a thing. Should companies be allowed to offer this as a service to parents who want to do this? And, you know, if so, should they be regulated in some way? I, it's a, there's a lot of very interesting and, and challenging questions, I think, that go along with that. Scientists have already used CRISPR on animals extensively. Under current ethical regulations, they are allowed to do, seems like pretty much anything they want, with pigs, sheep, mice, cats, rats, certain animals, right, that are deemed lesser intelligence. Nakauchi's 2017 experiment saw him and his team successfully cure a diabetic mouse by growing a healthy new mouse pancreas using a rat embryo. All this animal splicing is not for veterinary medicine, but proof of concept for investors that one day we'll be curing diseases through gene editing. This research is being done in the US, which follows the ISSCR, the International Society of Stem Cell Research guidelines for ethical standards. And by those standards, they are uh, able to develop these human animal chimera embryos, but only up to the point before, right before they develop a nervous system. If they have a nervous system, they're deemed to have a mind and therefore it'll be unethical to experiment because given it's human. So, well, it's partly human. But last year, Japan changed the game by legalizing 
bringing these human chimera embryos to term. Nakauchi told Nature they will be creating animal embryos that lack a gene to produce certain organs. Once injected with human-induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells, the embryo will use the iPS cells to make the organ. He says he plans to grow mouse embryos for 14.5 days until they are almost to term. Rats will be grown to near term for 15.5 days and pigs for up to 70 days. The proposal is the first one approved since Japan lifted a ban in March on developing animal embryos with human cells beyond 14 days and bringing them to term. We do know that people are dying while they wait for the organ transplants that they need. We don't have enough organ donors and I mean imagine if you know you had a family member who needed a kidney and you had that difficult choice to make whether you're going to give them your own kidney. When it comes to disruptive biotechnology, investors love that. We have a huge, huge biotechnology industry and stem cell research, you know, is always, it, it's one of those things that's like people want patents because they're going to get, they want to be uh, ahead of the next breakthrough. Let me go into both sides. Um, so first of all, the scientists who are advocating for human chimera research. Let's see what their arguments are. But uh, if the principle works, I think this is a very good uh, way to make uh, functional organs. We should be able to make human uh, pancreas in pigs. Here's an article from Nature magazine where scientists are urging for a lift on the National Institute of Health's restrictions against human chimera research. It says many oversight mechanisms exist for research involving human subjects and cells as well as the transfer of materials into other vertebrates, partly to reassure the public that biomedical research is ethically conducted. We believe that this notice poses a threat to progress in stem cell biology, developmental biology, and regenerative medicine. It says there's tremendous potential to elucidate early human development. Much work remains to unravel key differences in early human development between humans and other vertebrates. If we succeed in inducing significant chimerism between human pluripotent stem cells and pre gastrulation stage embryos from non-human vertebrates, tremendous potential exists to develop humanized disease models for studying drug pharmacology. So when they say humanized disease models, I think they're talking about creating creatures that they can test on, studying the effect of the drug on that creature. I mean, they do it on primates, they do it on monkeys. So I would think that, you know, if they could blend monkeys and humans, if they could blend a pig or a mouse and, and human, um, they would get a better model. And so I think that's what they're talking about. I mean, we have to draw a line somewhere. We have to respect human dignity. And I think that is a major concern among bioethicists. Let's look at exactly what they are saying. There was one study that analyzed the ethical literature containing reasons for or against human animal chimera research. It found that 15% of the ethical literature was in favor of research on human animal chimeras and the other 85% is against it. The ethical reasons against the research was grouped into four categories. Category A and B were more self-explanatory. Um, the the chimera's treatment, welfare, its creation, you know, basically, should, is it even right to mesh up DNA of an animal with a chimera that's basically category A and category B, the treatment of it. Now, category C, uh, meta metaphysical and social issues, this is what they listed threat to human dignity, the potential blurring of species identities, chimeras uh, may invoke an instinctive repugnance. Such creatures are unnatural, uh, like monsters amounting to, you know, playing God but creating a monster. Um, the existence of chimeras could lead to moral confusion, have a slippery slope effect, as in important psychological and social boundaries that are important to being human could be eroded by the existence of these chimeras. 
Category D, which was the downstream effects of Chimera research, um, these reasons were individual medical safety might be infringed. So this is the idea that the person receiving an organ grown for them, you know, they could be receiving something their body won't accept or something that one day develops pig cells or has some kind of a pig virus. <laughs> I, I guess it's just at the end of the day, how how would you test that the organ will work in a human body before you transplant it? I guess you'd have to test it out in a real life or death situation. Um, but yeah, there's there's concerns over making the organ synthesis thing work beyond a reasonable doubt. Number two, there might be a threat to some third party uh, and a threat to biosafety in general. The third reason in this category is that funding Camaro research may contradict distributive justice, so money is better spent elsewhere. We still have other medical breakthroughs to put money behind that don't raise these ethical questions and have more promise. Not all scientists are like this, but for every futuristic idea or science fiction idea that's out there, there's a scientist who's willing to pursue it to the end. And if it might be the next big thing, there's a government that will fund that research because it wants to get on top as, as a new industry emerges. Back in 1997, there was a human-animal hybrid patent filed in the US, but it's not what you think. Wary of the rapid pace and direction of developments in human biology and biotechnology, Stuart Newman took an unusual action. A cell biologist and professor at the New York Medical College, Newman applied to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office on December 18, 1997, for what has been dubbed the Human Z Patent. This paper explains inventor Stuart Newman filed the application for a patent not to acquire a patent on an invention, but to serve as a de facto petition to the Patent and Trademark Office to clarify its stance on the patentability of newly invented living organisms. However, the patent wasn't a problem. When Newman filed it in 97, he was among 15,000 biotechnology patents applied for that year. The Onco mouse was the first complete living, breathing mammal to be patented in the United States, but it was not the last. Scores of transgenic mammalian patents have since been approved, such as those for cows and sheep modified to produce medicinal milk, genetically modified mice and rats predisposed to certain diseases, so they can be used for lab research, and those are just a few examples. Mother Jones Magazine caught on to what Newman was doing and ran a story called Gods and Monsters. It says, Newman seeks to patent chimeric embryos and animals containing human cells. Taken to its most extreme but not necessarily impossible end, the technology could be used to manufacture soldiers with armadillo-like shielding, quasi-human astronauts engineered for a long-range space travel, and altered primates with enough cognitive ability to ride a bus, follow basic instructions, pick crops in 119 degrees, or descend into a mine shaft without worrying their silly little heads about inalienable human rights. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching to the end. Give it a like, subscribe if you're new. 